The Tang Dynasty Tour Chapter 2 Chang'an in a Dream Section 9 The Evil Biojing Li Jing, who had always been as stable as Mount Tai, fell to the ground and burst into tears. Li Er was puzzled, and so were the ministers. Seeing that Li Jing's grief was not a temporary act, tears came down, his voice became hoarse, and he kept asking his majesty to give him a long vacation. He was going to find his brother to comfort his longing for many years. Passion is everywhere. Yun Ye rubbed his butt and sighed secretly. He just made such a big move with a little test. The dignified general will abandon thousands of troops and horses, and his beautiful wife and concubine will run to find a legendary black charcoal head. The relationship between the two has long surpassed friendship and turned into a broke back mountain. Could it be that he and the bearded guest are a pair, and Hong Fu Nu is a strange third party? Yun Ye, tell Li Iking where the bearded guest went. Don't hide it. Li Er estimated that he was annoyed enough and roared at Yun Ye. Report to your majesty, the bearded guest went to Bio Jing, and probably won't come back. In the Tang dynasty, the emperor's power was deeply rooted in the hearts of the people, and there were unknown places everywhere in the world. There was the queen mother on Kunlun Mountain, the Dragon King in the East China Sea, the gods and Buddhas in the sky, and the King of Hell underground. Anyway, it was full of gods and immortals. Even if you squatted in the toilet, there might be a wretched immortal peeping. Why can't I add a Biojing besides, the name I gave is what people want to see. Yun Ye's heart was full of evil flavor. Nonsense. Bio Jing is another name for the moon. Who can climb to the moon Li Jing is indeed a versatile talent. His first reaction is that Yun Ye is talking nonsense. General Li has such great official authority. He just kicked the Marquis into a big horse and now accuses him of talking nonsense. Who said there is no one on the moon there are Chang Yi and Yutu. Maybe the bearded guest admires Chang Yi's beauty and has a way to run to the moon to see her beauty. Chen Yejin's temper of protecting his shortcomings broke out. He had long regarded Yun Ye as his nephew. It didn't matter if he kicked him back and forth, but he was unhappy when others kicked him. General Li's military exploits were too great, and he had long since annoyed the ministers. It was rare to have a chance to humiliate Li Jing. When would it be, so the whole hall burst into laughter? His Majesty Li Er's face turned green, and he coughed twice. The hall suddenly became quiet. He looked at Yun Ye fiercely and asked, What's the matter with Bio Jing? Tell me honestly, if you talk nonsense, I will let you go to Bio Jing. Very cruel threat. How dare I talk nonsense in this grand hall? I also asked my master where Bio Jing was. But I was beaten up badly. It was the first time my master beat me, and my butt was so numb that I couldn't feel it. So I remember what he said very clearly. My master said, Everyone wants to live forever, from emperors to ordinary people, they all regard prolonging life as their deepest dream, but they don't know that longevity itself is the biggest joke. Buddhism requires extinction, Taoism requires inaction, and Confucianism explores the right path. They all lead to the same goal, which is to turn people into stones. Turtles live long because they are slow, trees live long because they don't move, and only stones last forever. 
to destroy human desires, cut off human relationships, cut off the five senses, and block hearing and listening, is this still a human being not knowing the cold and heat, not knowing the fragrance and stench, not distinguishing right from wrong, having no sense of home and country, no sense of family affection, no joy, no sorrow, what's the difference between this and rotten wood the reason human beings are different from animals is that we have thought, understand etiquette, no family. Affection, can work, can create, can transform the world, and can also create the world, making all things in the world serve us. This is the duty of human beings. Going beyond one's ability and trying to pursue illusory longevity, but not knowing that heaven has already made arrangements, if you want to live forever, you have to become a stone. It's ridiculous that the world is as ignorant as moths flying into a fire, crying and it's ridiculous to rush to turn into stone. I stepped into Bai Yujing with half a foot but forcefully came back. I just don't want to become a stone between heaven and earth. I want great joy, great sadness, great mourning, great pain, just not to become a stone. My master also asked me, if I wanted to be a human being for a hundred years or be a stone for ten thousand years. I replied that I would naturally want to be a human being, not a stone for millions of years. The master was very happy, touched my head, and read a poem, The White Jade Capital in the Sky, The Nine Palaces and Twelve Cities, The Immortal Caressed My Head, nodded my hair, and received immortality. After listening to this poem, I had nightmares for several days. I always felt that there was a stone-like immortal who wanted me to turn into a stone like him. The master held me and slept for two days before getting rid of the nightmare. This is the Bai Yujing that I know. Yunye sincerely hoped that Li Er could listen to it and stop dreaming about longevity. How many wise emperors had fallen into this big pit of longevity, leaving only a laughing stock for thousands of years? Li Jing stopped talking, his face showing neither joy nor sorrow and cupped his hands towards Yunye. I wonder if your master has ever mentioned how my brother the bearded guest is doing just now. Li was rude. I hope Marquis Yun will tell me the truth. Uncle Li, I'll tell you the truth. Please don't be angry. Then he bowed to the civil and military officials in the hall, Junior will repeat what my master said. Please don't blame me, your majesty. All my uncles, please bear with me. Otherwise, if each of you kicks me once, I'll be crushed to death. Li Er said with a gloomy face, just tell the truth. I will make my own decision. It's agreed that you won't blame me. Yun Ye quickly knocked on his heels. The whole hall burst into laughter. The ministers were very curious. What did his master say was he going to put everyone in this hall in? My master said, the more idiots like the bearded guest go in, the better. Now that the world is beginning to be governed again, I wish that all the scourges in the world could go in and become stones so that the world can be more peaceful for a few years. The bearded guest probably can't get in yet. He has obsessions and worries that he can't let go of. Even if he goes to Baijing, he won't die, but he will lose a layer of skin. As soon as Yun Ye finished speaking, he ran behind the pillar and hid, determined not to come out. Li Jing was filled with anger. When he thought of the bearded guest's life and death, Yun Ye's master was gloating over his misfortune. 
he wanted to catch Yunya and vent his anger. Seeing that he was hiding behind the pillar and it was not easy to catch him, he could only say hey and stop talking. Fang Xianling came out with a smile and said, Your Majesty, I think this is a bit rough, but it makes sense. Those who stir up the world are all people with great abilities. If all these talents are put into Baijing, I will be willing to follow them even if I am shameless. Her her her. For a while, the entire court was scrambling to go to Baijing. Of course, some were trying to raise their worth, such as the old fool Yuchi. You were originally just a piece of stone, what are you fighting for? Li Er's court became a vegetable market, and it was very noisy. Li Er frowned and coughed for a long time before stopping the minister's nonsense. Seeing Yun Ye hiding behind the pillar and sticking his head out to look outside, he became angry and ordered the eunuch to drag him out. Humph! Turning the court into a market, what kind of system is this since Li Iking has already asked, then the bearded guest's fortune and misfortune are his own doing, so don't be sad. Although he obtained the potato seeds, it was Yun Ye who offered them to me. I said that I would reward great achievements with a marquee title, and reward hard work with 10,000 gold. I will not go back on my word. Someone, bring up the official attire. Two eunuchs brought up a purple gold crown and a crimson robe. Old Chang smiled and bowed to Li Er, my humble minister's son and Yun Ye are very compatible. Why don't I put on his official attire for him? Li Er smiled and agreed. Elegant music played on both sides of the imperial platform. The Minister of Rights, Wang Gui, read the imperial edict in an unknown accent, which was very pleasant to hear. Four palace maids slowly came up to remove Yun Ye's outer garment, take off his golden crown, comb his hair with a comb, tie it into a bun, and put on a crimson robe for him. They tied a jade belt around him, bowed, and retreated. Old Chang swayed over, took the purple gold crown and put it on Yun Ye's head, fixed it with a jade hairpin, tied the crown belt under his forehead, and loudly instructed him to be loyal to the country and repay the emperor's favor. The elegant music stopped, and the instruction stopped. Fang Xianling personally tied the purple gold fish bag on him and led him to kowtow three times and nine times to thank the emperor. Li Er encouraged him with a few words, and the ceremony was completed. The eunuch announced the end of the court session, and Li Er sat on the imperial carriage and left first. The ministers came up to congratulate him, making Yun Ye at a loss and flustered. Niu Jinda said with a smile, You have become a real marquee. When will the banquet at your mansion be held? Old Chen took over the conversation, this kid has a good mouth. The food he made still makes this old man drool. It won't do if it's not lively. I'll ask your aunt to take care of it later. Your family is not good enough. 